Hello everyone, welcome to my class. This is the pre-calculus class and this is our first day of class. So let me start the class right away. In today's class, I'm going to cover a polynomial and rational inequalities. So in this class, we would like to solve the polynomial inequalities and rational inequalities. Let me start with a quick recall. A polynomial is a function of the form uh, given by uh, Px equals to an xn plus an minus 1 xn minus 1 plus dot 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 a1x plus a0 where an an minus 1 dot 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 a1 a0 are real numbers and n is the whole number. The degree of a polynomial is the largest exponent of all terms in the polynomial. So here n is the degree of this polynomial p. Quick example. Now quick example. px equals to 2. So now here is x has power 0. So that means this is a 0 degree polynomial which, which is also called a constant function. Next, px equals to 2x plus 3. Here, x has the exponent 1. So, this is the first degree polynomials or linear functions. Next, px equals to x square minus 2x minus 3. Here, degree is 2. Next, px equals to x cubed plus 3x square plus 3x plus 1. Here, the degree is 3, which is also called a cubic functions, and so on. Quick note, if P is a polynomial function with a degree n, then P has exactly n zeros. The number of zeros of the polynomial is equal to the degree of the polynomial. Graphically, zeros of polynomials are the x-intercepts where the graph of the polynomial crosses the x-axis. Quick example. Quick example. Px equals to x square minus 2x minus 3. Let's write this polynomial, which is a, a second degree polynomial, in factored form. So this gives us two factor, x minus 3 times x plus 1. So the real zeros of these polynomials are set this factor equals to 0 and solve for x. So we will get x equals to 3 and x equals to minus 1. Geometrically, the graph of this given polynomial crosses the x-axis at x equals to 3 and x equals to negative 1. I hope this makes sense to you all. Now let's move on. Quick Recall about a uh, rational functions. A uh, rational functions is of the form so Rx equals to Px over dx, where P and D are both polynomials and dx is not equals to zero. Note the domain of the rational function is all real numbers except the zeros of the denominator functions. Quick example, 1 over x is a rational function, 3 over x squared minus 1, another rational function, x plus 3 over x minus 2, another example of rational functions. And by the way, the domain of this last function is everything but not x equals to 2. Great. Let's move on. Let me introduce the inequality symbols. So this symbol, which is read as strictly less than, this another symbol, which is read as strictly greater than, the third symbol, which is less than or equals to, and then the last symbol is greater than or equals to. I hope you, you are familiar with these inequality symbols. So now, Let's talk about uh, polynomial inequalities. So first, quadratic inequalities. 
So the idea here, replace equal sign in the quadratic equations by an inequality sign. For example, x squared minus 2x strictly less than 3, x squared minus 2x less than or equals to 3, x squared plus 2x strictly greater than negative 1, x squared plus 2x greater than or equals to negative 1. So the questions at this time we will ask to ourselves how to solve the quadratic inequalities. So the ideas suppose fx is a quadratic written in a standard form then completely factor then completely factor the fx solve fx equals to 0 to get the real zeros of the quadratic functions plot those zeros on the number line which divide the number line into sub intervals next create a sign chart use it to determine which sub intervals satisfy the given quadratic inequality and state the solution set using the interval notations so that is your solution set will be x belongs to the appropriate interval here. I hope this idea makes sense to you all. And sometimes zeros of multiplicity are helpful as odd multiplicity implies the graph crosses the x-axis and the even multiplicity of zero implies that the graph bounces off the x-axis. Great. Now with those ideas, now let's do the quick example now with those ideas now let's do the example one example one solve the quadratic inequality x square minus 2x less than or equals to 3 so let's begin the solution solution first need it in a standard form so rewrite fx equals to bring this 3 to the left side so x square minus 2x minus 3 less than or equals to 0 so next factor it here x square minus 2x minus 3 so it has two factors which are x minus 3 and x plus 1 next set these factors equals to 0 to get the real zeros of the f so this gives us x equals to 3 x equals to minus 1 are the real zeros of f next let's create a sign chart for f so next let's plot those zeros on the number line so here x equals to minus 1 here x equals to 3 so we have three sub intervals negative infinity to negative 1 negative 1 to 3 and 3 to positive infinite now pick a testing point in between these two real zeros so I picked a 0 here so pick x equals to 0 put x equals to 0 here and find y y equals to 0 square minus 2 times 0 minus 3 we don't care the value here we only care whether we are getting positive or negative y values so here so this is 0 gone this is 0 gone so negative 3 that means we, we get the negative value so that means we get the negative here just mark negative here so that means f is negative on these intervals and then we know the multiplicity of real zeros are odd number so here x equals to 3 multiplicity 1 x equals to minus 1 multiplicity 1 so that means the f switches the sign so at 3 then it switches the sign so minus becomes plus on this sub intervals and on this side this minus and then this becomes plus so now we found the sign chart for f here is the fx is positive here is fx is negative and here is fx is positive and by the way, on these real zeros, fx is 0.
great since we want those x values for which fx is less than or equals to zero that means we are looking for the y values which lies below or on the x-axis so the solution set is then x belongs to negative one two three it's a bracket here so it's a closed bracket here awesome uh, i hope this completion makes sense to you all now let me do a another quick aside here let's graph the quadratic functions fx equals to x squared minus 2x minus 3 so let me scroll down so so here is a graph it's a coefficient of x squared is positive so that means it's opening up what is parabola and it's real zeros are negative 1 and 3 so when you put x equals to 0 your f 0 is negative 3 so that's negative 3 here so now the question is we just answer these questions for what intervals is the graph of fx below or on the x-axis so the solution set is x belongs to negative 1 to positive 3 both endpoint including so this close bracket means we are including the endpoints of the sub interval great now similarly we can extend this idea of solving inequalities involving higher degree polynomial so next let's talk about a polynomial inequalities suppose given polynomial function is in standard form then we want to solve the inequalities fx less than 0 fx greater than 0 fx less than or equals 0 fx greater than or equals 0 so the question is how to solve the polynomial inequalities by the way the quadratic inequality we just covered is also a polynomial inequality the quadratic uh, function is the second degree polynomial ideas this one on. write the polynomial in completely factored form and solve fx equals to 0 to find the real zeros plot the zeros on the number line which divides the number line into a bunch of sub intervals then use change and no change approach the function will change the sign for odd multiplicity of zeros and there will be no change for the even multiplicity of zeros use the end behavior to determine the sign of f in the outermost intervals then label the other sub intervals as fx negative or fx positive by analyzing the multiplicity of neighboring zeros you can pick a test point in each sub intervals to determine the sign of fx as well finally use the sign chart to solve the inequality and state the solution using the interval notations great now it's more easy for us to uh, explain those steps in a example now let's do example two example two consider the polynomial in a factored form fx equals to x times 2x minus 1 quantity square times x plus 2 quantity square answer the questions a through e first part a create a sign chart for fx let's begin the solution to find the real zeros of fx set fx equals to 0 since the polynomial is in factor form so set this right hand side equals to 0 then we know the product of numbers equals to 0 implies each number has to be 0 that's the 0 product property so that means x equals to 0 here 2x minus 1 equals to 0 so x equals to 1 half by the way the x equals to 1 half has a multiplicity 2 and third 0 is x plus 2 equals to 0 which gives us x equals to minus 2 with a multiplicity 2 so here we have three zeros x equals to 0 
has a multiplicity 1 x equals to 1 half has a multiplicity 2 this 2 and the third one is x equals to minus 2 with multiplicity 2 I hope this makes sense to you all so now let's create a sign chart for fx draw the number line plot those zeros here is a minus 2 here is a 1 half and here is a 0 next pick any testing point inside any two real zero so here I pick x equals to minus 1 put put x equals to minus 1 on this f then y equals to here is a minus 1 there is a minus 3 square and here is a 1 is square so the value turns out to be this is negative because this is positive so only this minus creates a negative so the y value is negative so here we are getting f is negative then use multiplicity to find the sign of f in other sub intervals so at 0 since multiplicity is 1 so odd multiplicity then that means this sign changes so here is a negative and here is a positive and now towards left side of this testing point so negative 2 since negative 2 has a multiplicity even number so that means the graph bounces off the x-axis that is this sign no changes so minus again minus and the last sub intervals here since x equals to 1 half is a 0 with multiplicity even number so again this side the sign of the f doesn't change I hope this sign chart makes sense to you all next question B says solve the inequality fx strictly less than 0 so the solution so in this sign chart let's see where is our fx strictly less than 0 so here x belongs to negative infinity to negative 2 excluding negative 2 we know at negative 2 f is 0 and then union negative 2 to 0 so I hope this solution set makes sense to you all next part C solve the inequality fx is less than or equals to 0 that means we are looking for y value below or on the x-axis so that means below or on so here's negative infinity to negative 2 below at negative 2 is on and negative 2 to 0 again below at 0 is on and uh, at one half is on so the solution set is let me scroll down so the solution set is x belongs to negative infinity to zero including zero so that's a typo here it should be a bracket including zero and union the singleton set one half so negative infinity to zero including 0 and union just a singleton set 1 half I hope this makes sense to you all let's move on part D solve the inequality fx is strictly greater than 0 so here we are looking for the y values which is strictly above the x-axis so again looking at the sign chart here strictly above the x axis so that means here 0 to 1 half excluding both endpoint union 1 half to infinite here so the solution set is x belongs to 0 to 1 half union 1 half to infinity excluding both endpoints here I hope this makes sense to you all let's move on Part E solved the inequality fx is greater than or equals to 0. So that means we are looking for a y values which lies above or on the x axis. Now let's see again the sign chart above and on. So here's 
0 on 0 to 1 half positive at 1 half 0 and 1 half to plus infinity is above and at negative 2 is on so then single to negative 2 and including 0 to plus infinity so that means the union of singleton set and the interval 0 to plus infinity so let me go down here so again there's a typo this should be a closed bracket means including 0 awesome I hope this makes sense to you all now let's move on now let's do example 3 solve the polynomial inequality so the given polynomial inequality is x raised to the power 4 plus 8x squared plus 6x less than or equals to 6x cubed plus 9. Now let's begin the solution. We need the polynomial in a factored form. So first let's rewrite this polynomial in a standard form. That means in decreasing order. So bring this right hand side to the left side and write fx equals to x to the power 4 then minus 6x cubed then plus 8x square plus 6x and minus 9 less than or equals to 0 so then to write this polynomial in factor form let's first find the factor the so the possible rational zeros are the factors of the 9 over the factors of the coefficient of x to the power 4 which is 1. So the factors of 9's are plus minus 1, plus minus 3, plus minus 9 over the factors of 1's are plus minus 1. So let's divide here. So plus minus 1 over plus minus 1 plus minus 1 plus minus 3 over plus minus 1 is plus minus 3 plus minus 9 over plus minus 1 is plus minus 9 so now we have these six possible rational zeros of this given polynomial so now let's check now we use the synthetic divisions by the way so in the synthetic division let's check for x equals to or minus 1 so in the synthetic division so here is I, I hope you this makes sense to you all here this is the coefficient of x to the power 4 this is the coefficient of x to the power 3, this is the coefficient of x to the power square, this is the coefficient of x, and this is the constant term. And in the synthetic divisions, we carry the first one here, so 1 as it is. And then in the next step, so it goes here, we multiply negative 1 times 1 and write down here. Then add these two, negative 6, negative 1, negative 7 next multiply negative 1 times negative 7 and write here then add this to 15 next multiply negative 1 times 15 right here and add this to and next multiply negative 1 times negative 9 right here which is positive 9 add this to so this gives us now 0 so that means our remainder is 0 so x equals to minus 1 or x plus 1 is a factor. Great. Next, let's check x equals to plus 1. Now, what do we, ha what do we have? We have now, now this is 1, negative 7, 15, negative 9. So now here is, by the way, our degree of this polynomial is 4. So after first synthetic division, now this reduces to the third degree polynomial so so now here's I'm in this this step here the second synthetic division then again the same idea one write down as it is and then here multiply this one and this one and write down here add this two next multiply one and negative six and write here add this two and similarly multiply one and nine write down nine here and then add this to again we got 0 that means x equals to 1 is a 0 or x minus 1 is a factor so now we have 
Now we have the polynomial fx equals to one factor is x plus one, another factor is x minus one, and then now this is a second degree polynomial which is x square minus six x plus nine, and we can easily factor x square minus six x minus nine, which is simply x minus three quantity square. Copy x plus one as it is, x minus one as it is, and now to find the zero. Solve f x equals to zero. That means the x plus one equals to zero gives us x equals to minus one. X minus one equals to zero gives us x equals to plus one. So x equals to plus minus one. And x minus three equals to zero implies x equals to three, but multiplicity is two. I hope this computation makes sense to you all. So now we have the real zeros of this polynomial. Which are x equals to plus minus one and three. The x equals three has a multiplicity even number. Next, let's create the sign chart for f x. First, plot those zeros on the number line. So here is a minus one. Here is a one. Here is a three. And pick a testing point. Which is easier. Let's pick a zero. X equals to zero. Then put it here. That means everything this zero, this zero, this zero, this zero gives us negative nine. So y value is negative. That means we got the negative here. So y value is negative. That means f x is negative here. Then use a change and no change approach. So since x equals to plus minus one has multiplicity one, so that means we have a change. So the sign changes. So here sign changes. So minus is plus, and in this in sub intervals, again minus becomes plus. And and here, since x equals to three has multiplicity is two, even number, so the graph of f x bounces off the x axis. So that means there is no change in the sign of f x in the sub interval. So plus here plus. I hope this this sign chart makes sense to you all. Then and next, since we want those x values for which f x is less than or equals to zero. That means, that means y values below or on the x-axis. So that means here, x belongs to negative one to one, including and union singleton set three. I hope this makes sense to you all. Now let's move on. Next, let's talk about rational inequalities. The idea. Solving rational inequalities is very similar to solving the polynomial inequalities. We'll use the zeros of the numerator and the vertical asymptotes, that is, the zeros of denominator, to divide the number line into subintervals, and we repeat the above procedure. Now let's do example four. Solve the rational inequality. The given rational inequality is one over x minus one, strictly less than x minus three over x plus seventeen. Let's begin the solutions. Need it in a standard form, so let's bring right hand side to the left hand side. So the sign changes here. Then solve this two. Fractions. Let's take a LCD. So here, LCD turns out to be x minus one times x plus seventeen. So then, multiply the first fraction by x plus seventeen on top and on bottom. Similarly, on the second fractions, multiply on top and bottom by this factor x minus one. So then, the next step here. So one times x plus seventeen, this minus as it is, then x minus three times the x minus one over LCD, which is x minus one times x plus seventeen. I hope this makes sense to you all. This is still less than zero. So next, let's foil here. So the denominator copy as it is, and then the numerator. So here, one times x plus seventeen is x plus seventeen here, then minus uh, minus as it is, 
and next multiply these two factors which turns out to be x square minus 4x plus 3 multiply this minus inside and add and subtract gives us minus x square plus 5x plus 14 over same denominator as here let's write this in standard form so let's multiply by negative sign then that this inequality flips so we have x square minus 5x minus 14 over x minus 1 times x plus 17 strictly greater than 0 let's factor the numerator which gives us two factors here x minus 7 times x plus 2 all over x minus 1 times x plus 17 strictly greater than 0 now this is strictly greater than 0 means we want the y values strictly above the x-axis. Next, let's find the zeros of numerator and the vertical asymptote, that means the zeros of denominator. So here, x equals to 7, x equals to minus 2, these are the zeros, and the vertical asymptotes are at x equals to positive 1 and x equals to negative 17. I hope this makes sense to you all. So since the multiplicity of zeros and uh, VAs are odd number, means odd means 1 here, so the F changes the sign at those zeros and vertical asymptote. Next, let's create the sign chart. Let's scroll down here. So draw the number line and plot those zeros and VAs. And now let's pick a point in between any two zeros so here is we pick x equals to 0 as a testing point so pick x equals to 0 then this gives us this guy is 0 this guy is 0 so minus 7 times 2 is minus 14 over x0 x0 so minus 1 times 17 is minus 17 so minus minus cancel that means y is a positive again we don't care the actual value we only care the sign of y so that means at 0, the sign of fx is positive. Then let's use multiplicity to find the signs of fx on other subintervals. So now va is here, va is here. So the sign changes. So here is a, this plus is minus and minus is plus. And this side, plus to minus, minus to plus. I hope the sign change. I hope this sign chart makes sense to you all. So then, what we want, we we wanted our fx is strictly greater than zero. That means we are looking for the intervals where fx is strictly lies above the x-axis. So that means x lies on on these sub intervals. That means negative infinity to negative seventeen, excluding negative seventeen by the way that's a particle asymptote and union in this sub intervals negative 2 to 1 again excluding both endpoint and union 7 to infinite again excluding 7 I hope this makes sense to you all so we finish this sections thank you